In this video, I'm going to go over five new features that we have released in the last two updates to Orderable. So they will be in order and they'll just kind of build on each other. And I'll also let you know what we're working on. So the first new feature is touch product layouts. So when you have a product layout here, you have to click on the add button right here in order to add it to the cart. We've now added an option where you can click anywhere on the entire card and it will add the product to cart. So when I click right here, even though I clicked on the image, the product was added to the cart. This is very easy to implement and it works fantastic for mobile devices because it makes it a touch first interface. To enable this on your product layouts, you'll go to Audible, you'll click on Layout Builder, you can click into any of your existing layouts out, and you're going to see the option right there where it says clickable card, which makes the entire card clickable. All you need to do is check this box and then click on update and you will have this feature enabled on that individual layout. The next enhancement is some styling control options for your product grids, more specifically these font sizes. Now by default, the font sizes are pulled from your WordPress theme, but there are certain cases where you might want a different font size. And instead of having you add custom CSS, which is always an option, we wanted to make it easier for you. So let's take a look at those. I'm going to hover over the orderable menu item, click on settings, and I'm going to click on styles right here. And you're familiar with a lot of these styles, but then right here, it has a new option that says product cards and you could set the font size that you want as well as the size of the price. So let's go ahead and make the price kind of large. So I'm going to enter in 24. I'm going to click on save changes and then let's go here and do a refresh. So take a look at the size of the price and now I'm going to refresh it and you can see the price got larger. So those are the enhancements to the product layout size. Next, we've added cart icon positioning. So here's our floating cart icon. And this got in the way for some of our customers and they were quick to let us know. So we've added some positioning options. So if you have a live support or some other kind of floating option here, a lot of people will have a scroll to top. This is going to make it so you can move the floating cart icon someplace else to not conflict with the scroll to top. Now, these settings are also found in the style tab. And when I scroll down, we have this option here for mini cart settings. So you can choose the position and we have different position options as well as fine tuning that position to make it pixel perfect. And this is how you'll be able to still have that icon on the bottom right, but you will make it above your scroll to top if you wanted. So let's try something here. Uh, so for the bottom, let's go ahead and enter in a dramatic number, like say 400 pixels, just like that. And I'm gonna click on save changes. Uh, next, let's go to the front end of our website. And what's going to happen is you can see there's an item in the cart. Now, when I refresh it, you can say, oh, my gosh, the cart icon hasn't moved. There's something wrong. And that's normal if something's already in the cart. So we'll need to go in here. We'll get that out of the cart. And now we're going to do a refresh. And so now when we add a product to the cart, you're going to see the option is or is gone into effect and that's moved up 400 pixels, which is uh, pretty dramatic right there. Um, so you pretty much have to empty out your cart in order to see the change go into effect. And so let's go ahead and put that back to zero, of course. And then we have these positions here. So uh, you can play around with this in order to get it exactly where you want it on your website. I'll go ahead and save that. Now, the next feature is product quantities, and you might have already seen this in this video, but let me show you. So now when I go to add a product, I'll click it 
and here it is, we have this option to change the quantity. So if I actually want two of those, I can just click on two and everything updates automatically. You can see my subtotal has updated and let's go to three and you can see it's updated again. This is one of the most requested features for us to add and we got that in there. And lastly, we've added a custom tipping option for the checkout. Let me show you that in action and then how to set it up. So first I need to get to the checkout. So I'll click on the checkout option here and you can see here is my tip options and this is how I've set it up. Everything is completely customizable and it's pulling this color in from the style settings where you choose the color and whether you want it to be square or round just so everything's consistent across the platform. So you see a button here and you can see a label so you can change that label and what happens when someone clicks on it. So you can apply a percentage or as you see right here, a full dollar amount as well as there's a no tip option and you can control this label and a custom tip option as well. And these are optional. So you can see right here when someone has added a tip and you can choose the one that's chosen by default. You see it right there, tip, and you see the amount. So if I just wanted to do the hundred dollars, I'll click right here and you can see there it is a hundred dollars added, or maybe I do something custom. So instead of a hundred, let's just do $55 and click on apply. And you can see there's now a $55 tip. Like everything else, we made this very easy to implement and customize. Let's take a look at it. I'm going to go to Audible. I'm going to click on settings and we have this option here that says tip settings. I'll click on it and first thing you'll want to do is enable tipping right there and here are our options. So by default it'll just have this one option and let's go through what you would enter in a label for the button, an amount, and whether or not that's a percentage or if that's a fixed amount, which is a fixed dollar amount. And you can add additional tipping amounts. You can see right here, I've added 18% and then here I've added $100. Now you can easily delete these if you want, just click on delete and now I would only have two options and you can add as many options as you want. So I just went ahead and put that to 22%. And actually, I probably should have been 20%, but that's fine. We'll leave it at 22%. And then right here, we have our default option. So if I was to click on Save Changes, then this list is going to update. So let's just go ahead and do that. I'll click on Save Changes. And we'll scroll down and now we have it set to 22% or it can be set by default to be no tip. It's completely up to you. Set an option for the label for no tip. And do you want custom tips or not? It's up to you. You could check that box and enter in the label right there. All right, so I'll just go ahead and click on save changes like that. We'll go to the checkout and we will do a refresh just like that. And you can see it no longer says 100. It now says 22%. And when I click on it, it's going to calculate 22% of this number right here. So that pretty much sums up what we've been working on and what we're working on and what we're planning on la launching in the near term. We couldn't be more excited about the future of Audible. We're so grateful for all the feedback that you guys have been giving us and we want to implement a lot of the ideas that you are giving us and we're really excited for this custom checkout experience and we're excited to get it into your hands. Thank you for watching this video so that you can be up to date with everything that we've worked on and we really appreciate you being an Audible customer.